Hello, I'm here with another ramble. I decided to hit play on this one because this is something that's been percolating in my head for the better part of a weekend now. And it's about time that I sit down and record my thoughts on this. Because here's the thing. On June 28th, 29th, round about there, I will have been off Instagram for four months. I left Instagram four months ago. And I also want to provide a little bit of larger context for my role with social media, because this talk is going to be about social media kind of broadly, but also Instagram in particular. So I left Twitter in 2017-ish, shortly after the 2016 election, because everything happening around that time. I was like, Twitter's just gonna get worse. So I left. Then I left Facebook around 2020, right around when the, right around when the COVID pandemic was breaking out for a bunch of different reasons. I had shut down my uh, Facebook page Uh, earlier than that because it wasn't getting any traction and it was just a money pit. I would put money in there and get nothing back. And that's going to tie into a later point when I get to that point. So left Facebook in 2020. So by 2020, the only social outlets that I had were Instagram and Tumblr. I had not joined TikTok until technically last year. Honestly, TikTok is the worst, but we'll get to that later. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I was on Instagram for a while, but then in 2021, my account got hacked. I had three or four backup accounts, so it wasn't like a huge loss, but it was still really aggravating to deal with in that time frame. 2021 was just not a great year because like a couple of months after my Instagram account got hacked, that was when I lost three members of my family to cancer within like a three month span. I lost my father, I lost an uncle, and I lost my last grandparent. 2021 sucked (laughs) is what I'm saying. Um... Anyway, back to the discussion of social media. So, yeah, Instagram account account got hacked. So I just kind of retrofitted a Instagram account that I had set aside for a side project and made it my replacement art page. Um, So FYI, if you see any posts from Kelsey D. Crawford, that is no longer me. That is a crypto bro. Far as I can tell, he's not been messaging anybody because of some technical gobbledygook. <laughs> Cause hilariously he tried to he tried to change a like security phone number, but it was still using my phone number. So I was getting all of these like security codes texted to me. And then he texted me because he had gotten my phone number. He texted me and he was like, can you text me the security codes? And I'm like, no, (laughs) like you stole my account. You're, I know you're not going to give it back to me. If I give you these security codes, you can just stay locked out. (laughs) So far as I can tell that account is just dead. Then I retrofitted a side project Instagram into Kelsey D comics. Um, Full disclosure, by the time that you, uh, hear this episode, that account's getting deleted. Like, it will be officially off the internet sometime in July because I started the process of shutting down that account. Back in February. I shut it down back in February well before the AI scraping announcements and everything else because there were just some patterns that I was seeing in Instagram that I did not like. And it's those patterns that I wanted to talk about. And I'm not saying all of this to be like, oh, look at me. I'm so smart. I'm so better than everybody for catching on to these things. Because honestly, I was on the platform for years. I fell for this shit. 
Nobody is immune to it. Like, it's really insidious how this stuff works. And that's what I want to talk about, because it's like, I want to point this out, not to shame anybody, but to be like, this is what is happening. It is up to you what you do with this information, but here's what I did with this information. So I had mentioned in a previous ramble about my anti-attention economy manifesto, and I'll have that linked in the description again. I had written that after seeing a lot of the patterns that I was seeing in Instagram. I mean, social media broadly, but especially Instagram was guilty of this. And fa Facebook as well. Um, I was just seeing it a lot more obviously on Instagram because I wasn't active on Facebook anymore. So right around the time that people were starting to really hype up AI, like several months ago by this point, I think we've been dealing with this hype for almost like a year by this point, which is just stupid. But, you know, NFTs were also really hyped up for like a year or two. This is the way of tech hype. It lasts for like a year and then they find a new shiny that turns out to also be really bad for humanity in some way. And everybody chases after that. That's also why I didn't hop on to Kara. Because Kara is just another app. Like... Everybody being like, oh, switch over to Kara because it's anti-AI and it's a better place for artists. Like, maybe, but where are the art directors on there? Um, like, maybe it's better for artists, but I'm not jumping onto it because it's just another tech hype train. I'm not really that eager to jump onto it. And also, I just want to throw out there that every once in a while on my YouTube feed, I'll get a recommendation from, I think, Kelsey Rodriguez is this artist's name. And she had posted a video. I didn't bother watching it, but there was, the headline for the video was, uh, Kara will not destroy Instagram. Nothing will destroy Instagram. And I'm sitting here like, did y'all forget about MySpace and Twitter? <laughs> Platforms die. They just take a while to die out like twitter is definitely like hobbling at this point uh myspace maybe it's still around people say that it's still around i don't believe them so it's yeah platforms die all the time like the dot com bubble like i was there for that like i was relatively cognizant of the dot com bubble like people putting a lot of hype into dot com stuff and then a lot of those sites disappeared or they were acquired by larger corporations like i think go.com was acquired by disney if i remember correctly so if you were wondering where the heck that went that's where it went so i do think that instagram is on its last legs it's been on its last legs for a while but the fully embracing of AI is going to be one of the nails in the coffin. I don't think it's the final one, but it's one of the larger nails. And here's the thing. I kind of saw it coming because as soon as AI was being hyped up and people were like, oh, we can use generative AI to make art and make ebooks. And there were a lot of posts on Tumblr cycling around right when generative AI was becoming popular. There were a lot of posts on Tumblr that were like, that were like do not buy this ebook about foraging. This will poison you because it was written by generative AI. AI does not know what it is saying. It just strings words together in a if this then that format. Like, oh, if this word precedes this word, then this word comes after that word. That is how generative AI works. It is not smart. It's just hyped up pattern recognition. And the same could be said for how it generates art. Like it's pattern recognition, but it's really bad at pattern recognition in art. Particularly when you try to combine multiple artists at the same time, because every artist has a different way of perceiving patterns. And they have different pattern recognition models in their perception. And it's those different models in their mind space that that is how they make art. A lot of what you see from artists who 
truly engage with the process and don't use generative AI, a lot of artists make their art based on pattern recognitions that they have developed since they were we. So you cannot replicate that with generative AI. Generative AI is just really faulty pattern recognition. And it's not even like cognizant of the patterns that it's pointing out. When a lot of people are like, oh, AI is better at medical procedures and pointing out like anomalous patterns so you can detect cancer faster, like maybe, sure. Um, Every once in a while, I'll see a post whenever my computer boots up because I have a Windows machine. It'll be like, AI is being used to track patterns in deforestation. And I'm like, that's not AI. A at this point, AI is a marketing buzzword. It's not an actual machine. It's just a label being slapped onto a computer program. So all this is to say, when generative AI was first being hyped up and people were like, oh, you can make art and eBooks with this stuff. I was like, people are gonna start using this to generate bullshit on Instagram. To, and Instagram is going to allow this because Instagram's incentive is to keep people on the platform for as long as possible. And Twitter is also guilty of this because Twitter's model is, <laughs> despite Elon Musk's attempts at trying to change it, Twitter's model has been from day one to keep people glued to the app for as long as possible by any means necessary. Uh, so Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, all these other social media platforms, they will generate any stupid bullshit that it takes to keep you glued onto that platform. Even the AI art where it's like, this woman has three tits and that's not supposed to be a third tit. Like, even just talking about generative AI is attention for those platforms. It's like how... Uh, P.T. Barnum put it when he was like, even bad press is good press because it keeps the attention on what you're doing, which is, we are definitely seeing that with how Instagram is fully embracing AI. Webtoons also has this problem. They are fully embracing AI generated comics and using AI generation tools to keep people on Webtoons for as long as possible by any means necessary, even if it means generating really garbage art so that people talk about how garbage it looks and being like, oh, I found it on this site. Even bad press is press for these sites. And I'm kind of tired of it, which is part of the reason why I wrote the Anti-Attention Economy Manifesto. The other part of it is a lot of this labor is being put on artists and creatives and they're not even being paid. And I'll get to this point later because there are going to be some people who are like, wait a minute, what about the content creator pools? We'll get to that. So, you know what? Let's get to it now. So the content creator pools, the chief example I'm thinking of is TikTok. Hank's channel already did a video about why the TikTok uh, creator fund is bad. One, it's a static pool. It's not replenished. So the business model then becomes the more creators the platform gets, the less the creators make because that static pool is being divvied up among more creatives. So they're not getting a living wage. It's just a static pool of money that is being divvied up among more and more and more creators until the pool runs out. Then when the pool runs out, that's when TikTok starts to fully initiative itself. Like, TikTok is speed running in shitification, which is why I hate the platform so much. I used to not mind it. I used to be like really middle of the road about it, but now I just actively hate th this thing. Like, and the fact that Instagram and YouTube are embracing the TikTok short format, I'm not surprised about TikTok. Uh, making its way onto Instagram because Instagram is a spam generator. Like that is Instagram's main objective at this point, which this is actually leads into a side tangent, but I'm going to mention it here. I just listened to a uh, YouTube video by not buying it, which talks about 
anti-marketing resources. One of those anti-marketing resources was Noam Chomsky. But there was a quote that Noam Chomsky gave that really hit me hard. And I'm going to share it here. I'm going to paraphrase it just a little bit. He said that nowadays there is content and fill. Content, as he defines it, is the advertisements. The fill is the car chases that happen between advertisements. And that hit me hard, especially since there are so many people online who are advertising themselves as content creators. So it's like you're saying your job is to generate ads. That hurts me. As somebody who makes comics for a living, who is actively trying to share those comics and share meaningful work, that's why I'm not going to call myself a content creator. I don't make ads for Instagram or for any other social media platform. That's not my job. Like, if there's any kind of marketing that I do, it's not going to be on social media anymore because social media is just noise. Social media is the equivalent of standing in the middle of a airplane tarmac without protective ear headgear and just letting the noise overwhelm you. That is social media to me, especially nowadays. It's just noise and none of it is good. Like even the noises that are like, hey, move out of the way, a plane is about to land on top of you is being drowned out by the noise of the plane. <laughs> so... Yeah, if there are any artists who are still on Instagram, first of all, don't leave the platform. Second of all, you can get better attention on your art by posting it someplace that's not on Instagram. Like, just have a website. If there's any one thing that I am noticing in terms of like pattern recognition, it's that hanging out on YouTube, I am seeing more and more young people under the age of 35 being like, I'm done with social media. I'm just going to make a website where I can showcase all the work that I do. And I'm like, good. For one thing, that's a return to like old internet pre-social media. But the other thing is, is that having your own website is a way to like control your own digital footprint without being at the mercy of social media and its algorithms. And we're definitely going to see web rings rise again. But I think I mentioned that in my previous video. So just give that a listen. So all this is to say I left Instagram because I was like, so artists are being asked to generate ads for these platforms who aren't even paying them. The form of quote unquote payment that they are offering is likes and shares and follows, but it's not money. It's just attention. Attention does not pay the rent. <laughs> uh, and attention does not pay for groceries. And it it's awful that all these platforms are demanding this kind of like digital rent from their users. It is very much like a techno fiefdom. That was that that's not an origin talking point for me. That is something from the Factually podcast by Adam Conover. He talks to I don't remember his name, but he he brought up the idea of techno feast fiefdoms. I'll have a link to that episode in the description because it is fascinating to me. Um, it was one of the podcasts that radicalized me and made me go, Oh, I need to leave Instagram. One second. I have some tea. Um, <laughs> I actually rearranged my tea drawer. I have an entire drawer full of tea I had to rearrange it because I'm like, I need to go through some of this stuff, man. I got to actually drink it. But in order to actually drink it, a lot of this needs to be a lot more accessible. So I just took like five minutes earlier today to rearrange it. And now I'm drinking one of those teas that was tucked away. Um, I'm pretty sure this has CBD in it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, you know, it's a black tea. So it's nice. Um yeah, drinking black tea after noon is going to probably affect my sleep, but that's fine, I guess. <laughs> um, I really needed the caffeine today. Um, I also, <laughs> in my infinite grace, I 
clocked my arm against the doorknob of my linen closet and it hit hard enough that my arm still hurts. I'm kind of paranoid that I might have put a hairline fracture in there. I don't think I did, but it's still like, it's still pretty tender and bruised today. Um, I'm not doing any heavy lifting. I'm doing my best to be really gentle with it. I'm putting ice packs on it whenever possible to keep the any swelling down. There's not any swelling, really. Um, it's just kind of purple, um, <laughs> but it still hurts. Um, I'm just going to keep an eye on it because it's not the first arm injury that I have had. Um, anybody who's been following my work since 2013 knows that I broke my wrist back in 2013. Um, and I have an entire blog post about it. Um, I, I probably will have that link down in the description as well. Um, but yeah, injuries are nothing new to me. Um. Because I, I'm just so full of grace, y'all. I'm as graceful as a cow standing in a hammock. Uh, anyway, circling back to uh, the talk of Instagram and quote-unquote content creators, etc. Like, I just got really tired of being asked to do all of this emotional labor and not being paid for it. Which was why I left social media. Uh, in particular, Instagram. I had gone back to Twitter around 2021 just as a way to be like, eh, it's, I'll try this out because it seems like the tabletop sphere is an interesting space to be in. So I'll check this out, see how it goes. And then within about a year, Musk bought the platform and then I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> um, so I haven't logged into either of my uh, Twitter accounts since then because I had a funsy Twitter and I had a Twitter that I revived in like 2022 for my art because I wanted to try to keep that separate from my funsy account, but I haven't bothered to log back into it. Um, I'm just going to hold on to those usernames just so nobody else can claim them. Um, I don't care about Instagram at this point. Like if people tried to claim Kelsey D comics after I delete the account, like whatever, it's not me. Um, and Kelsey D. Crawford has been hacked and abandoned. So as far as I know, it hasn't posted anything. Um, not since 2021. But anybody who still uses Instagram, like, for, for one thing, I don't blame you. The way that Instagram works, it is very addictive. The thing is, though, is that part of why it's addictive is that it works off of Skinner Box play logic. And that's the same sort of logic that you use for slot machines. And that's another reason that I hate TikTok, because it's just roided up Skinner box. Because <laughs> the way that TikTok works is that it will heavily reward you for the first video that you ever post. And then every video that you post after that gets diminishing returns. <laughs> Like, maybe you'll get, like, a million views on your first video, and then after that, don't be surprised if suddenly you post a video and it only gets nine views. Like, don't be surprised if that happens, because that's just how TikTok works. It heavily rewards people who first start posting, and then the more that you post, the more that it's like, no, we want to reward the people who are newly posting so that we can get them addicted to the slot machine, because we want them chasing after that high of getting that million views the first time. And the, yeah, it's an, it's an industry where the platforms are being run by these billionaire tech bros who are extracting rent and attention from you as much as possible. And I'm fairly well convinced that the uh, hoarding of attention is stolen labor. Like, it's not just that they're not paying you for the work of actually being on these platforms and making work for it which is again making advertisements like please there's another reason that you need to leave the platform because you don't need to make advertisements to keep people glued to the platforms please don't do that to yourself you can make meaningful work <laughs> like and that meaningful work is not going to be on instagram and to the people who are like but i need to be on instagram because otherwise i'm going to miss out on career opportunities I'm telling you this as somebody who had been on the platform since 2015. I have never gotten a job from Instagram. All of the most successful job offers I ever got were from Tumblr and Twitter. 
and I'm saying this with confidence because <laughs> Tumblr was where I got my first comics job working on validation. Twitter was how I found out about the call for submissions for uh, an Iron Circus comics anthology. Both of those were the biggest game changers of my career. Neither of them happened on Instagram. Instagram has never been a platform where I found work. It has always been a platform for generating spam and for coming across so many people who want to scam artists out of their money. I cannot tell you how many people have DM'd before I left. They've sent me DMs trying to be like, hey, I'd like to commission you and pay you by check. Don't and do not work with these people. It is a scam because the way that model works is they will send you a check for an outrageous amount of money. Then they'll say, oh, I paid you too much. I need you to send me back some before the check clears. And then you send the money back and then the check never clears and you are out the amount of money that you sent the scammer. Do not engage with these people. Anytime that somebody reaches out to you and they're like, I want to pay you by check, especially if it's on Instagram, don't fucking engage with them. They're all scammers. Um, anybody who messages you being like, hey, if you answer this question, you'll win $1,000. Don't do that. That's a scam. <laughs> um, anybody, anybody who reaches out to you via DM uh, saying that they will commission you, uh, like, you gotta be clear about your method of payments. Because if they try to pay you by any other method that is not the method of payments that you set is more than likely a scammer. Just don't do it. I've never had any successful commission bookings from Instagram. All of my successful commission bookings have been from my email newsletter. And also from just reaching out to people directly, uh, especially on Discord. Like sometimes I'll just, I'll just post a message on Discord being like, hey, I'm available for commissions. Here's a link. And I get attention that way. Like Discord has more of a success rate than Instagram for me like and anybody who says no you can make money on instagram they're trying to sell you something and this is really the point that made me go okay i have to sit down and record this i had the realization that instagram and other social media platforms are multi-level marketing pyramids because you'll start with like the lower peons people who have like less than 500 follows who are like, oh gosh, I really just want to get those numbers up higher. And that's when you'll start coming across a lot of advertisements and a lot of even YouTube videos that are like, here's how you can get hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram. And it's almost always some kind of hustle culture guru, quote unquote, program that they're trying to sell you. This is something that somebody wrote a Medium article about, and if I can remember it, I'll have that linked in the description, but I know they wrote it on Medium, and they were like, yeah, I had joined Pinterest because I saw somebody being like, this is how you can make money on Pinterest, and then I joined Pinterest, and then I did not make money. And the entire reason that that creator, who was like, here's how you can make money on Pinterest, the reason that they made money on Pinterest was because they were selling the program saying this is how you make money on Pinterest. It's the Tim Ferriss four hour work week scam writ large. And for folks who have no idea what I'm talking about, um, I, I never actually read the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss, but I listened to an episode from the podcast. If books could kill where they talk about the four hour work week and in describing it, they were like, so this book came out in 2008 and it really laid the foundation for all of the hustle culture gurus that you see in the 2010s. And I'm like, oh, good Lord, it does. Because Tim Ferriss's model that he outlines in the four hour work week to be like, this is how you can get away with doing a four hour work week so that you can fuck around and do whatever you want. Here's how you do it. One, pass yourself off as an expert. Two, Put together an informational program like a book or a DVD and sell that book or DVD to a particular like subset in an industry and buy advertising 
through in in the book it was using profnet to find publications that you can put your ads in for your bullshit program but the important thing to note is that tim ferris in this book outlines how to become a fucking guru scammer and that's why we see so many of these people we especially saw them in the 2010s because that was when the grift really started to catch on and people were like oh this actually works you can just scam anybody into thinking that you're an expert and then you can just rake in the cash because people will think that you're an expert and the real culmination of this is the mickelson twins and this is partly why the folding ideas video talking about the mickelson twins is such a comfort watch for me like every once in a while i actually have it like in the background and this is like i don't know my 20th viewing watching this thing or playing it in the background like again it's a comfort watch there's just something about dan olson deadpan delivery and dad joke like vibes that i resonate with a lot <laughs> but in that video he talks about how the mickelson twins do their scam and it's that tim ferris hustle culture bullshit where they paint themselves as experts in a particular industry and they will teach you how to break into that industry in the mickelson twins case it is a pair of grifters teaching you how to be a grifter and their particular grift is getting people to think that you can make millions producing audiobooks for audible honestly the folding ideas video goes into more depth about why this business model does not work so i highly recommend that you just watch that especially since that's one of his shorter videos it's only like an hour and 15 minutes long still have a sandwich sit down and watch it it's a great watch um again it's a com it's a comfort watch for me for a reason and part of the reason it's a comfort watch for me is because it helps me spot those patterns and it helps it helps me spot the rhetorical devices that a lot of these gurus will use to try to rope you into their scam but in listening to the mickelson twins trying to sell you their bullshit, it made me realize how prevalent it is on social media platforms and honestly social media is like the number one place for these gurus to go and advertise their stuff to you and that that alone is a good enough reason to not go to social media because you don't need that noise <laughs> you don't need somebody trying to paint themselves as an expert selling you on this is how you can make millions on twitter and then it turns out to be a scam course that they really over overcharge you for trying to sell you on a method that works for them 10 years ago that does not work now um another video I just remembered this super eye patch wolf also talked about a similar type vein he talked about how youtube influencer courses are garbage he has an entire video just about that and i highly recommend you watch that video as well because that paints how youtube videos and how youtube like creators will do that mlm marketing this is how you can make millions on youtube kind of structure but it just turns out to be another tim ferris four hour work week bullshit scam <sighs> yeah this rambling turned into a rant <laughs> oh man so i will say uh repeating again from the top it has been four months since i left instagram I've not logged into Twitter for a while, a long, long while. I'm trying to remember the last time I even logged into Twitter. I think it was like partway into 2023. It's been a while. It's been a while. Um, shout out to the Critical Role fandom for that. I haven't watched uh, Critical Role season three since like episode 87 or something like that but i did see some spoilers for the live show and i'm like okay maybe i'll get back into it we'll see sip of tea again um it's also finally cooled off since the heat wave has now passed we did have a thunderstorm roll in and that scared the fur babies a little bit especially mooney mooney is terrified of loud noises poor thing he's still 
a wee a wee baby. He's still a wee kitten. He's on he's only two. We rescued him back in 2022. So, yeah, he's still a baby. Um <laughs> Bree Bree just slept right through it. She's old. She's 18. She's allowed to sleep through thunderstorms at this point. <laughs> um I also took a minute uh, before the thunderstorms really kicked in, I, I took some time to play with Mooney. He really wanted to play fetch with his mousy. He has a little mouse toy that the tail has been thoroughly chewed off. Uh, one eye is missing. A good chunk of the fur is missing. It's been dunked into the kitty water fountain multiple times <laughs> by this point. And yet he still loves this toy and he will carry it in his mouth and then bring it up to me and just drop it. And we'll play fetch. <laughs> He's like one of the only kittens that I know of that you can play fetch with this cat. <laughs> uh, so we played fetch for a little bit. It was important to me to have that time to play with him. I do know that if I still had Instagram on my phone, I feel like I would have been really bitter about having that time with him because that would have been like, oh no, you're distracting me from being on Instagram. How dare. And that's not a mindset that I want. And I know that that's a mindset that I would be prone to because back when I was still on Instagram, there would be times where I would catch myself having those kinds of thoughts where I would be like, oh, how dare you interrupt me? I'm trying to be on Instagram. Instagram's not worth being on. It has not been for a long while, probably since day one, I would wager. It's just not worth it. And it's not worth being on a platform if it's going to make you think the kind of thoughts that make you bitter towards the people or pets that you love. And I'm so glad that I took that time earlier today to just play fetch with Mooney. He's a fun little guy. And it was, it was a good thing that I spent those like five or 10 minutes just playing fetch with him. Cause that was what he wanted. It was what I wanted. I needed to look away from the computer screen for a little bit because I had been staring at it for like almost an hour by that point. And I was like, I need a break. Let's play fetch with Mooney. And that was nice. It was really nice. So four months out from leaving Instagram and so many more months out from leaving pretty much everything else, I'm enjoying my downtime a lot more. I'm not being distracted by endless scrolling or feeds or ads or whatever other bullshit these platforms try to generate to keep you glued onto the platform by any means necessary, including negative outcomes, because even negative outcomes are still outcomes to these platforms. It's just better to not engage with that. It's, it's better, especially for me, uh, especially since I am neurodivergent and my brain really likes to hyperfixate on things because that's just my flavor of neurodivergent. Um, I really needed to not be on these social media platforms because I don't need to hyperfixate on the kinds of things that social media is trying to spit at me. I don't need that in my life. What I need in my life is time to play fetch with Mooney. It's time to sit with my sketchbook and doodle some ideas. It's time to veg out on the couch and watch some of my favorite YouTube people. people. Because I don't consider YouTube to be a social media platform. It is a content house. <laughs> like, well, let me rephrase that because, again, contents are ads. Um, it is a place for people to post videos. It's, it's basically a hub. It's the best way to put it. It's, it's a media hub for people to upload their videos. And despite what people will say, there is no like magic video formula that will suddenly make you break the YouTube algorithm so that you get millions of views. Like that doesn't, that doesn't happen. Sometimes you just, you pull the stick on the slot machine and sometimes you get a hundred bucks. Again, Skinner box logic. 
No, YouTube does have some Skinner box logic. When it comes to, you know, getting those millions of views, I'm honestly really happy with the sub count that I have. Like, it's a small group. It's less than 500 subscribers at this point, And I'm happy with that. It's still meaningful to me to make videos like this because one, it's been meaningful to actually make these kinds of rambling videos to just designate a slot of time at this point, about 40 minutes. Holy crap. This is almost, almost 40 minutes long. It's just over. Holy crap. Thank you for sticking with me this long because <laughs> I'm not editing this. I am not editing this down. So I just appreciate folks who stick with me for these kinds of videos. And I appreciate the folks who've been sticking with this channel since day one. That tells me that you really like my art and that you like my really hot takes <laughs> and, and my opinions on these things. Like that is meaningful to me. And in a way, I'm happy to be doing this along with my comics. Like comics is still going to be my main thing. No doubt. Don't get me wrong about that. I love making comics. I will still be making comics. Even if I break both of my wrists, I will find a way to keep making comics. <laughs> um, because, I mean, if, if Yuko Ota can figure out how to draw offhand, if I need to get to that point, I will figure it out. Like, that's kind of one of my mantras that I wrote on my little mantra board is, if they can do it, I can do it too. It's a way to, it's a way for me to connect to the human spirit. And it's also a way for me to overcome not imposter syndrome, but like the comparison trap, the idea that comparison is the thief of joy, but being able to twist the mantra around to being like, if they can do it, I can do it too. Is like, if they can figure out how to make it work for them, I can figure out a way to make it work for me. That's how I use that mantra. So like, if Yuko, o if Yuko Oto could figure out how to draw with her offhand, if push comes to shove, I can figure that out too. Or like, if the star, if Starfish Face can figure out how to get 100,000 subscribers just by doing her own thing, I can do that too. Not gonna get there within a year. Because... You have to be really lucky on the slot machine <laughs> in order to get a hundred thousand subscribers within a year. Um, and honestly, I'm not really after a hundred thousand subscribers. That's just entirely too many people. I don't need to fill up a like baseball stadium 10 times over to be fulfilled. <laughs> I'm making comics like making comics is enough fulfillment for me. YouTube is a, is a fun thing. For me, this is fun. And I'm actually going to keep up this format. This format of recording ramblings and putting it over top footage of me drawing something. It seems to resonate with people. Because the previous video that I did really resonated with folks. I got a lot of Discord messages about it. Like... And, I mean, compared to other videos, like, it came out about the same in terms of, like, the ultimate amount of viewership that I got out of it. I'm not really hurt by that. I'm not after numbers. I'm not after big numbers, I should say. What I'm after is making stuff that is emotionally fulfilling. And right now, this format is emotionally fulfilling for me. It's more emotionally fulfilling for me to draw comics, <laughs> honestly. But in terms of other creative pursuits, like YouTube's a nice hobby uh, for me anyway. There are people who try to uh, make this into a career, which, look, I recognize that we live in a capitalist society and capitalism, particularly late stage capitalism, really pushes you to monetize everything that you do, including your hobbies. But you are allowed to have some hobbies that are just for fun that you don't need to make money out of. You are in fact allowed to have joy that is specifically for yourself. 
And in fact, giving yourself the permission to do that is a radical act of self-care. And on that note, I think I'm going to wrap it up here because it is now about 45 minutes. <laughs> Thank you for sticking with me for this particularly long ramble. I will do my best to have the next one not be this long. <laughs> um, if you would like to check out my other work, especially my comics that I get a lot of emotional fulfillment out of, I'll have links to all of my stuff down in the description. That's all I got for now. Thank you for listening. You are awesome.